everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, how the hell are you? I have been better. I lost my super pet this week. It was almost 12. I'll tell you this. Wow. Something about a special animal um, and what they can do, it is sort of a superpower. So he's in uh, he's in a better place, but uh, yeah. it's definitely been a, a bit of a, a bit of an adjustment. That's for sure. So. Yeah, my condolences to you, man. I, I've been wanting a dog, but it's like you know, it's it's this a is you know you get attached, and then it's not a long you know life them you know and to go through that is, is pretty tough i'm sure um a lot of stuff to go over man some interesting topics and news items that came out this week we're going to be talking a little bit about star wars very funny thing that occurred a few weeks ago a few days ago actually um uh we're going to talk some obi-wan and when uh Aaron mcgregor says he says he will not disappoint um and i think all of us are, especially myself, because I've said in the past when this show comes out, everybody's going to be watching. Disney Bob Chapek describes reset on film talent's deal amid Scarlett Johansson fallout. This is something that we've been discussing for quite some time, yep. a few months now, and that he's just obviously confirming that this is what they're going through. Uh, Daniel Craig says something that got people riled up, which... Brian, quite honestly, I agree with his uh, opinion uh, regarding the James Bond role. Uh, Sony, uh, Spider-Man universe reportedly leading up to the Sinister Six film. I mean, we'll get into this a little bit more, Brian, because also Hardy on Venom and some of the things that he said, they're really going for it. And they're really hoping to make this just as successful as Marvel, although I think they have a huge hurdle to overcome in order for that to happen. Uh, Daredevil actor Charlie Cox wants to see John Bernthal return as the Punisher, of course. And Kevin is, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna bring him back. And it's very interesting. I don't know if you saw this uh, Marvel character, uh, Hit Monkey. You see that uh, trailer? Uh, yeah, this is the the animated one. Along yes, this is right. This was basically the the sister show to Modoc, which came okay. out on Hulu. A, a, they were the only two the only two TV shows that were in production at the time of the Fox merger that survived the uh, the shutdown of the old Marvel TV when when Kevin's crew took over. I have an interesting opinion regarding this uh release of this show and um then we're going to get into the batman and andy circus's confidence that matt reeves will deliver and, and it's like we all know that there's there's no news that comes out of the batman unless i see new footage that's going to get me as excited as i am for this film but let's get started with um Original Star Wars editor Marsha Lucas roasts Disney sequel trilogy. She states, they don't know what they're doing over there. Um, what else does he say, Brian? Oh, she gets very specific where she basically is like, you know, I like Kathy Kennedy, I like Frank Marshall, I like J.J. Abrams, but what they did is horrible. Like, I hate their ideas. I hate their execution. She just absolutely goes in yeah, yeah. on all three films and crushes yeah. them. Just yeah. absolute no ambiguity. The force is strong with this one. <laughs> hey. She straight up said what everybody's been thinking has been afraid to say in those circles you know in those circles is you know some disagreement some agreements about how the story went and whether it was i mean you got your star wars lovers are gonna love everything but this one certainly there was a it was a polarizing trilogy and i for one don't care for it 
I, um, there has been talks, Brian. I don't know if you can um, correct me if I'm wrong, but there have been talks of redoing a trilogy. It ha- has there? Have you heard something like that? Well, there's a movement that people mm-hmm. want to do. There, there's, I think there's two schools of thought. There's the general movement of redo Rise of Skywalker. Okay. There's a specific one about that. And then I think there's the George Lucas had his ideas for what this mm-hmm. trilogy was supposed to be. Let's make that mm-hmm. and call it canon and get mm-hmm. rid of these three movies. Yeah. Not happening it, anytime soon. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah. Again. What were your thoughts when you read this, man? You, 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 obviously, she went in. What do you think Kathleen Turner and the rest of that group are thinking when they read this? That's an interesting question. I mean, I, I probably think they're dismissive of it, to be quite yeah, honest. Yeah. I think they've heard it all before. Yeah, sour grapes <laughs> from the past kind of deal. And I think, you know, I think to be quite honest, they, you, I mean, J.J. Abrams has certainly moved on. He yeah. doesn't, he doesn't, like, this rolls off his back. He's playing yeah, yeah, in the yeah. DC playground. He is not going to be doing Star Wars again. I don't think he yeah, want to yeah. do Star Wars again. Yeah. So he has no impact. And yeah, we've talked about this rumors that Kathleen Kennedy is, you know, on her way out in the sense mm-hmm. of close to retirement, wants to mm-hmm. redo her contract, mm-hmm. um, wants to get that that last Indiana Jones movie done. And then she and Frank Marshall are, are going to call it, call it a career. So if, if that's true, then they don't care either because it's someone else's yeah. problem. Yeah. You know, but I think we're, for Disney, Disney is, and we're, we're going to talk about with, with the Obi-Wan series, Disney is reinvigorating Star Wars on the small screen. And yeah. they're doing a fabulous job of that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't, we have, we're probably, I don't know if we're going to talk about the anime that just came out visions yeah i mean which has been a mixed reception to be quite honest but at the same time you just like to see them trying new things right these are legitimately new playgrounds and so that whether it's bad batch whether it's this like whether it's mandalorian whether it's obi-wan whether it's um you know some of the other shows that are in the pipeline book of fat like it's nice to see them mixing old and new and going in new directions. There's no rush. This is not a yeah. studio that needs to remake Star Wars 7 because it needs the money. Yeah. I think if they decide to move forward with something new, um, the question is, will, how far ahead of the Star Wars is, is this trilogy that recently got is it going to be canon? Because I've been hearing of, of it not being canon anymore. But if whatever they decide to do, I hope that they decide to go towards the future. And it'll be interesting to see whether that is canon or not, because it really, that, that whole storyline really like messes things up, you know? Yeah, no more Skywalkers. Like, yeah. Honestly, like no more Skywalkers, no more X-Wings. Millennium Falcon, retire them all. Yeah. I agree with George Lucas on this point. Like, there's a point at which bringing out the same vehicles and the same names, you just can't keep doing it. Yeah. No. I mean, I think about like Star Trek has had an uneven history, but Star Trek in its best moments understood that, you know, when they brought Star Trek to the next generation and that show really kind of found its stride, it was a different show. Yeah. William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, uh, DeForest Kelly show. Like it wasn't yeah. like, hey, we need to do new Jim Kirk. It was let's go elsewhere, new century, yeah. new planets. Yeah. Yeah. New yeah. 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 yeah, I agree. I agree. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of uh, Marshall Lucas's roast on uh, Disney Star Wars uh, trilogy. And uh, let's move on. Obi Wan Kenobi, Erin McGregor. The series will not disappoint. As Is there filming. a rule about this now? Where, where, what do you if mean? You make a Star Wars show, you have to then 
You have to promise to the fans and hype. I, I know, right? Because it's like, Mandalorian has been tremendous, right? It's like the show that people look forward to seeing whenever it comes out on a week-to-week basis. And now, ever since that, people have, like, with the Book of Fett and, and now with Obi-Wan, it's like, you got to hype it up. It's like, it doesn't need any hype. Oh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. I, I almost wonder if the real... What they're really saying is it's it's not going to be below the level of The Mandalorian. I, I almost wonder if that's what they're... I know, when they say don't disappoint, I th- on the one hand, you want to jump and say they're, it's almost like a, they're scared of getting the reaction that Rise of Skywalker got, right? That's the one oh. level of it. But the second level, to your point, is that Mandalorian has been so good yeah. that I think they're also saying this show is not going to be a step down from that. But, I mean, first of all, Deborah Chow, who's directing and running this show, came out of The Mandalorian. She directed, in season one, she directed several of the episodes. So, actually, yeah. you, should, you should probably expect that this is going to be be similar quality you mcgregor is not going to be bad as obi-wan he, yeah. he was the best yeah main character in the prequels which yeah. i know that's not saying a lot but he actually his performance as the younger version of alec guinness is yeah. outstanding uh, yeah, yeah, even yeah. though the dialogue is is what it is so yeah. he's not going to disappoint yeah, you know, Hay- Hayden Christensen. I like to believe that, you know, given a chance to run it back, yeah. I mean, he, he kind, you know, he bet he was better in Revenge of the Sith than people probably remember. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But this I, is I agree. this is his chance to really kind of restore that legacy for himself a bit. So I have to believe he wouldn't have come back unless he really believed he could channel something that would people would would want to see. So this show does. I mean, we talk about the old and the new. Mm-hmm. this is a piece of the old you know personally as i said i probably would have wanted to see a little different time period but these characters sell themselves like i don't, yeah. I don't even know like what what we're talking about here but who's who's not sh- at least showing up for the premiere to see what this is about of course i mean when you talk about seeing darth vader again in those early years what's he doing how powerful is he how you know how how is he, you know, does the reputation that we were left off with in the original trilogy continue and, and, and perhaps even gets more impressive? Uh, that I'd want to see that. And also, to your point, Hayden Christensen coming back and redeeming that character again. I agree with you with Revenge of the Sith. I thought that was the best of the prequel tr- trilogies. Um, but yeah, let's let's see. I, I Listen, I think those guys over there, especially with Hayden Christian, they're gonna they're gonna look for a performance that's right. So I, I was I've been thinking a lot about how this show could work in the sense of you can't ever have Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor duel each other again in the yeah, show because yeah. you violate too many rules. So yeah. I settled on like if this show has a whiff of like the fugitive, this could work. So it's like Obi Wan we know ultimately has to end up in hiding on Tatooine, uh-huh. but if you kind of draw him out and do this sort of intergalactic chase, uh-huh. where Aiden Christensen is trying to catch him, but is always kind of one step behind and is sending out other agents, and Obi Wan's kind of helping people along the way, uh-huh. and you're ultimately moving. I wonder if that's where they're going with this. Just like I said, the because ch- the biggest challenge is you can't have the two of these guys on screen in an action scene. So yeah. how do you make a great show where it's kind of two shows in one? I don't know. Yeah. I'm curious to see if that's what it is, like a big chase. I've mentioned before that for me, this show it will this show will show Obi Wan protecting. Luke and the secret. I think he has to go to great lengths to do that. To prevent that these kids are out there. 
that it might go to Darth Vader if certain people talk about certain things. So we're going to see that. This is going to be a soap opera, you and 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 very drama filled, uh, suspenseful moments uh, for Obi Wan Kenobi. So uh, let us know in the comment section below. Uh, are you guys looking forward to this? And I'm assuming everyone is because everybody. I will be surprised if it doesn't break records on the first night. So the other thing about this show is, Mandalorian went out of its way to minimize the presence of the force and only gradually introduced lightsabers via the dark saber, Ahsoka yeah. Tano, and then Luke's kind of dramatic entrance. Yeah. This show probably has to go the other way, right? I mean, Obi-Wan is at the peak of his powers yeah. in this show. So, and the Jedi have kind of been exterminated, but are not totally gone. So I would think if this show doesn't have at least one or two pretty awesome duels or action sequences with you and McGregor, I'll be kind of disappointed given that he was, he was involved in some pretty memorable scenes in the, in the prequel trilogy. Yeah. I, I would assume that hit, the use of lifesavers in this show will sort of, you know, prompt other characters of this show to sort of, alert that there's still a Jedi out there. I, mm -hmm. I, so so it would be interesting to me if he even uses the lifesaver and just uses his cunning and, and his other skills to get by instead of having to duel with anyone. So I did see, so the uh, so Sung Kang, who plays Han in the, in the Fast and Furious series, is in this yes. show. He did yes. say his character yes. has and uses a lightsaber, which is kind of what got me thinking. I wonder what they've got. Yeah, for it'll be interesting. It'll definitely be interesting. Let us know in the comment section below uh, what you guys think about this show coming up in 2022. That hasn't been a release date just yet. People are guessing Probably. back half, but no confirmation. Possibly, possibly. Because after Bunk of Fett, do we get Mandalorian after that? Or nope. There's no there's been no start date, then. no shooting. My thought is Mandalorian doesn't resurface till 2023. That's that's what it seems like you're pointing toward. Yeah, I would say late 2022. Christmas, um, maybe. We'll, could be. Could be. I'll, I think we'll probably get Obi Wan probably like spring around there, maybe. Okay. Let's see. Um, next up, Disney CEO Bob Jake Peck describes reset on film tenant deals and amid Scarlett Johansson fallout. This is something, again, we've been talking for some time that no longer are they going to be looking at these these deals in the same way that they've done them in the past. Um, and now, you know, Bob Chapek just confirmed that reset of how these things will be done. Uh, what I got to say is watch this channel. You'll get a lot of enlightenment as to what will happen in the future. What possibly may happen in the future. Brian, were you surprised by this, uh, these words he uttered? No, I mean, he basically quoted our show from a couple months ago where yeah. we talked about you've got these lame duck contracts that are pre-pandemic. Nobody contemplated this reality. Now they're trying to sort out the economics versus the contractual obligations of this generation of contracts. But everything that gets signed going forward is now going to think about how to compensate talent, whether it's day and date, whether it's theater only with a shorter window, whether it's straight to streaming, all of that is being rethought. I think you're going to have a lot of people staring at people in the mm -hmm. sense of, I don't necessarily think like the, like the first person who signs a deal, who has signed a deal, isn't necessarily going to be the template for all deals. People are going to come up with creative angles that they then negotiate. And if you're a big enough star, like going the other way, we just saw Chris Nolan structure a unique deal for himself mm -hmm. with Universal, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. old school deal because he can. So, you know, 
biggest stars out there today? I mean, like if you're, I mean, who, who would be like the biggest, most reliable draws, you know? So if, if The Rock wants a certain deal structure and then he sets the bar and the template, mm -hmm. then you probably could see like Chris Pratt or John Cena or Chris Hemsworth, like they may follow that or they may add a wrinkle to their deal and word of that gets back to the agents and then they say, well, I want that for my client, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, and whether it's Emma Stone or Brie Larson, they're like, we want that in our contract. Mm -hmm. So this is going to go through several iterations and eventually yeah. you're going to arrive at a model where elite talent is compensated a certain way. And then like yeah. next tier down, you, you probably don't have as many kind of bells and whistles and flexibility. It's all going to get redefined and is getting redefined. I still maintain, even though Chapek didn't confirm it, this is one of the reasons why Anthony Mackie took so long to sign the cap four was they mm -hmm. were figuring out if this character is traveling, screaming to big screen and back, yeah. how do I get paid depending on how this works. Yeah, yeah. That is most definitely why it took so long to get Anthony Mackie to confirm that he's in Captain America 4. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about this reset and uh, what the film industry is going to be looking for these 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 new kind that come by. You know, uh, that's going to be very interesting to see in the next few years. Next up, Daniel Craig says James Bond shouldn't be played by a woman. All I have to say is I absolutely agree. Brian, your thoughts? <laughs> See, I think I think people misconstrued this comment. That's my I think all they saw was that the statement and they didn't yeah. think through why he what? I understand why he's saying what he's saying. Yeah. And it's not what it's not that he's being chauvinist about the lead Absolutely role not. in the 00 Spy series. He's saying the Ian Fleming, James Bond character as written is pretty tough to convert into a female. It's pretty tough to gender swap it. And yeah. I would probably say that's a, that's a pretty reasonable position. Yeah. So, I mean, go ahead. I mean, go, go cook on it for a bit and I can come back with some more. Well, I, I, I think I agree with him 100%. Like, they shouldn't be this, oh, let's change the, the the gender of this character just to do it. He said that there are other characters. Make a character like James Bond. But she's a female. Who knows if they do a, um, a spinoff for this new girl? Lashana Lynch. Yeah. Yes. Why, why, why couldn't we see that? That would be dope. That's what he's saying. Let's leave the characters the way they've been created to be. And again, this is not whether, you know, James Bond could be black. We've already established that. Um, but a woman, all he's saying is, create a, a role for that. Like, for example, Charlie's Angels. You're gonna, Charlie's Angels gonna be dudes now? Or written that way, right? So that's what he's saying, that find a role that, that's as good as James Bond, but for a female. Don't gender swap it just to play with the character like that. Yeah, so... The comments draw additional scrutiny because Lashana Lynch is in the movie and rumored to be a, the next double O and maybe even, a you know, maybe even gets the double O seven number. But, but here's what I think the essence of what Craig is saying is the way Fleming wrote Bond and the way that Bond, they've tried to modernize Bond post the Cold War in movies mm -hmm. is that James Bond, the person is written and designed to be archaic meaning yeah. he's incredibly chauvinist he mm -hmm. objectifies and demeans women 
<laughs> that is part of his flaw yeah. as a hero. And I think to take that out of the character takes something away from what makes the character work on screen. What makes the way Sean, even Sean Connery, the way he played it was very yeah. cavalier towards women, toward his yeah. female leads. He was yeah. there and he was, quite honestly, he was racist in the first, in Dr. No, the way he treats yeah. Quarrel is, I mean, yeah. couldn't. So, but my point is, Bond is by definition a conflict. It's old school values ported into a world that no longer subscribes to him. The gender swap of that character is very hard to make sense. So so what would be the out of date woman who treats men like objects and has a backward looking value system? Like that's what I think he's really getting at is to like, you can't mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. change the gender and have everything else about the character be the same. You could change yeah. the ethnicity of the character and have everything else be the same, but you yeah. can't change the gender because gender plays a role in this character's relationship to the world. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's really where he was going with that, is to yeah. say you can make a double O franchise around a woman. That's not yeah. a problem. Yeah. But to name it, you know, Josephine Bond. <laughs> tough because you would then have to reverse all of these qualities about James Bond that quite honestly we don't like but we tolerate because it's made to work in the movie yeah well said man I mean you can't it I'm quite certain that he was going there but that's you know for for, for many people they're just going to listen to that 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 comment and throw their arms up in the air and and start yelling all these names and labels about who he is and, and not really understanding what he's really talking about. So let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about his statement uh, about James Bond uh, and who should, like, what gender should play the Bond character. Where do you think the Broccoli family is taking this? Like, because there's been all these casting rumors for James Bond, and now you have this Lashana Lynch character who we're finally going to see in a couple of weeks. What, what do you think is actually going on here? with the franchise i think they're looking to possibly spin off um off of james bond create this universe of james bond where it's not just being because think about you know how after you see a james bond film how long after do you get another film three four five years maybe yeah and when they where, when they recast bond it usually takes them at least five years to reset yeah. the franchise yeah so how do you keep that money flowing in that world is by spinning off so mm-hmm. that's why i think they're leaning towards and that's what i think that's what i think it makes sense to do that uh next up sony's spider-man universe reportedly leading up to the sinister six film they are really going and, and, and let me connect it to Hardy on Venom and, and the Spider-Man crossover. Yeah. But um, the Sinister Six film, obviously they want to do this. They want to build this universe. They want to have the same success as Marvel. They understand that people love Spidey. You know, my only concern is, and, and it's not like they can't do it. They can do it. It is a, a, a huge task. Why? Marvel has kept their fan base pretty much happy throughout this ride. I don't think Marvel fans will tolerate a horrible Sony Spider-Man film if they go at it alone. I think there will be huge repercussions if they go about it and they fail once and if they fail twice, there. This, this, this is the situation because they can fail once and then continue going, and they put out a brilliant film, right? So it's tough. And I guess you can look at DC. Hey, they have their whole universe, and they still messing it up, and they they, they continue going, and they're gonna make their money, and we can do the same, right? We have all these characters that we can play with. We can certainly do the same. So. 
there, you know, and then couple that with Hardy, and, and let me just quote him. Um, this comes to us from Dark Horizons, Mr. Garth Franklin. Um, Tom Hardy says, yeah, it's really hard because for me and the guys in the Ventureverse, we came together on the Sony, and that's who we worked for, for who we, who we won with. That's our team, you know, and obviously we just look at it as creators and say, look, at all of these things we could play with. But we, we really have to establish ourselves as somebody that maybe they want to play with, maybe somebody that belongs in that world first. And do you and do you like what we represent as Venom? Is this established? Once it's established, we then have to continue our Venom verse. But at the same time, we will always be looking to campaign to play with all the brothers and sisters who are out there. Uh, do you know what I mean? Whether we connect the dots, that's up to the constellations, and that's above my pay grade, but we would be remiss not to think about that when we're working what do I think about but when we're working on the material. Basically what he's saying is what I just said. They want this to work. They want to continue this this universe because there's money to be made, obviously. Um but they really have to come together and really build this universe and be as connected to that world from the way Marvel is connected to that world of the comics and bring a lot of what the comics are onto screen. And they would have to do the same thing with Spider-Man because once you go rogue and create this whole new thing and don't, be, don't have a foundation and want to do something different, you run the risk of probably possibly just losing out and completely just failing and then at some point more is going to get spider-man back but brian what do you think about what i just said well th this th these couple of articles answered some questions that i had i think we had so one is i interpreted the sony Spider-Man Universe article where they talked about the build-up to their Sinister Six film as confirming to me that the Sinister Six that is going to be portrayed in No Way Home is not the Sinister Six they are building toward. So Willem Dafoe, Alfred Molina, Jamie Foxx, maybe. That one is sort of a little bit on the 50-50 for me, but Molina and Defoe are coming back for No Way Home as a as a Marvel multiverse tool. They are not, at least how I read this, they are not in this Sinister Six film that Sony is building toward, which actually makes more sense to me because I've said to you, I don't get how you can have Defoe leading Aaron Taylor Johnson and Tom Hardy and Jared Lett. It just feels weird and very intergenerational. Mm -hmm. This article is suggesting that we are a ways away from the Sony's version of the Sinister Six, even though we might see six members of the Sinister Six on screen in December. That was one clarification. The second was, I hope, and I don't know what your thoughts are, or I should ask you, do you think Tom Hardy knows something when he's making these comments because these were pretty mature comments about how to do this which he basically said look we're the new kid on the block we haven't proven enough but we're hoping that if we put enough good product out there the big boys want to play with us and then we can kind of go from there i hope that is the line the studio is towing as well because their best chance for success is going to be to build carefully and with quality over time to get to this. They're do Everyone wants the universe, right? I mean, yeah. everybody. We just, we just came through the Godzilla Kong universe. Sort of worked, actually, but we came through it. Yeah. We had, remember, it was the, uh, the, the mummy, Tom Cruise, Russell Crowe. That was going to be a universe. That didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, was well, Luke Evans was Dracula and that you know that, that that thing went nowhere. Mm -hmm. Everyone's trying to get a universe. Yeah, yeah. So the thing with these guys is, you know, Venom won. So interesting to me because eight hundred and fifty million dollars says they hit something. Critics didn't like the movie at all. Mm -hmm. We've heard, we haven't seen the review embargo lifted. We, we will be, obviously, this week. We've heard Venom 2 is better. 
-hmm. but the box office environment is much tougher because of COVID and because of competition. I haven't heard anything about really about Morbius. We've seen the trailer. Uh Okay, kind of interesting, but I don't know if that didn't strike me as box office gold when I saw Mm -hmm. it necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they're building with these villains who, at the end of the day, need Spider Man to work. Yeah. And I will say, like, when I talk about Godzilla and Kong, that universe, who knows if that was really well thought out at the beginning, but none of those movies, the one thing those movies got right is Kong or Godzilla was in all of them. They didn't yeah. try to put a movie that was just Mothra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of what this is if you take Spider-Man out of a lot of these films. You kind of yeah. have to get Spider-Man there somehow. Yeah. So, I think Tom Hardy's comments um, were based off of conversations that they're having. I hope. Yeah. And I hope they listen to him because that's the right way to go and he's the he's a huge star and part of why venom yeah. works is he's a huge star yeah so let's see um like i said i think they're certainly going to go for it and we'll just have to wait and see if they um can match the success of marvel because i'm sure that's what they want and they they know that spidey is hot and and they know they can't afford to mess it up and based off what Tom Hardy is saying, he, you know, they really got to get connected with this and really put out good stuff. And that's the only way it's going to work. You know, that's the only way it's going to work. But that's another conversation. Fo- I was going to ask you, there's, you've seen it. There's that photo of Tom Hardy wearing the Spider Way no, no, no Way Home hat. It got yeah, everyone yeah. buzzing. That's Thinking, a troll yeah. job, right? There's no way he's in No Way Home. Could be, or you, you never know, man. You never know. He's got to know, though, if he's going to put that hat on. That's going to set the internet ablaze. So that yeah. had to have been like thought through before he was allowed himself to be photographed. Yeah. Like he could have been playing with people. He, he looks like he has that sort of personality where he'll want to. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, next up, Daredevil actor Charlie Cox wants to, wants to see John Bernthal return as the Punisher. Who doesn't, Bernie? Again, John Bernthal is, I think he's amazing in every role that he plays. This dude can be anybody from what I, from what I've seen. Um... I don't think Kevin Feige is going to put himself in a situation similar to thinking about whether or not he's going to recast Charlie Cox, thinking about whether he, whether or not he's going to cast a uh, recast uh, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. He's in the same predicament. He's not going to put himself in a position where he has to answer questions about why did he choose to play John Bernthal. Everybody seems to love his portrayal. I think he's the best that's ever done it. You know, and I and I've seen all of the Punishers. You know, <laughs> I've seen all of the Punishers. Dolph Lundgren. That's the Dolph Lundgren and Louis Gossett <laughs> Jr. <laughs> yeah, man. So again, and John Bernthal has been very like you know, he's been cool about it. He just said, y'all, he was happy for the opportunity. If they want him back, that he has no problem doing it because he loved playing the role. And being that the fans loved his portrayal, I'm sure Kevin was one of those fans. And if he has the opportunity to bring him back, he will. What are your thoughts? There is something going on um, in this area of the Marvel world. And I, I can't quite put my finger on it, whether it's a function of No Way Home but so Charlie Cox in this article, by the way, also lobbied hard for Kristen Ritter to come back as Jessica Jones. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. And what's interesting is so 
in the same about 72 hour period where Charlie Cox gave that interview, Ritter, Bernthal, and Vincent D'Onofrio all popped up publicly lobbying and saying they would love to come back. The timing of that seems curious to me. Why, why is every Marvel star from that show, from those shows, at the same time, all putting their hand up? It, yeah. it's, it's, something is happening. There's something going on behind the scenes involving these characters in these shows that these actors felt the need to all go on social media and all give interviews and all say, in no uncertain terms, they not only would be willing to say that, I mean, Vince Nafri was said, I am dying to play this character. Mm -hmm. I am dying to play this character. Wow. Yeah. I'm telling you, there's something afoot. I, I feel like we're some kind of announcement. Whether it's we see one or more of them in the movies, as has been rumored, or in, or in the Hawkeye show, that's one thing. But like something is going on with these characters and these actors where like negotiations and they're just lobbying through the press. I don't know what it is, but it can't be a coincidence. They're all out there. I'll say this, Brian. That for me, I think they're dipping their toes in the rated R um, world. Especially, I don't know if you guys have seen it. Um, Hit Monkey is a Marvel character, and is being is an animation that's going to be. Uh, and Jason Sudeikis plays a role in this in this, in this show as well, and is going to be on Hulu, which is. A platform that I've said in the past that if Marvel wanted to show or, or do rated R stuff, why not use a company that belongs to them? Yeah. Right? So this could be their way into that world because let's face it, if Fun just shows up as a if Punisher shows up as a PG 13 character, Mrs. Denarville, Charlie Cox, Jessica Jones. As PG thirteen, they can try to make it work, but with Punisher, it just doesn't work. With the kind of character that Vincent D'Onofrio is, it doesn't work. You probably get away with it with Daredevil, right? You can get it real edgy. Just look at Batman. The Batman is gonna be PG thirteen, and that looks edgy as hell, right? So you can get away with with some of the characters with Punisher. You can't do it. So with the hit monkey is a taste of what I think they're doing to experiment in that world and figure out how to get these characters on screen and on a streaming platform. Your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I mean, like I said, you know, Modoc was you know, went on to Hulu. I had a bit of an audience. That's my understanding. I actually, that's not a show that I watched, but I heard apparently yeah. it, was, it did kind of gather a bit of an a bit of an audience and now they're coming back with hit monkey and like i said this completes sort of the pipeline of things that was left over when when the deal was made but there's no question there's no question the hulu vehicle is there for use in the same way that in the old days touchstone pictures was the disney movie house and it just didn't have the castle on it but touchstone pictures made plenty of r-rated movies you know big action movies you know dark bloody action movies i mean we know deadpool 3 is not going to be pg-13 so yeah. you know, they they know where not to mess with that um and so i think yeah i think you're right i think they're sorting out what the future a more adult future for some of these properties looks like but i don't know i can just feel it i don't know whether it's coming at one of the year like they, whether they're you know d23 i don't know what they're going to use as the forum to uh, remember November twelfth. Actually, we're getting a Disney Plus only day. Okay. Um, from Disney, I, I guess I just have not. There's no reason for like. There's no reason for Kristen Ritter to be popping up saying anything right now. Yeah. So for her to show up as publicly as she, honestly, there's no reason for John Bernthal to be popping up yeah. saying anything. I mean, he, I know he's in many Saints of Newark, but like, there's yeah. no reason for him to be lobbying about this right now. So it yeah. just to see them all leads me to believe that some kind of discussion is being had. And I, you know, yeah. I think we talked about in the past, like, you know, I don't know that it's a coincidence that Finn Jones and Mike Coulter haven't popped up. Because I think 
the consensus was that certainly Finn Jones wouldn't come back. But I think, I mean, I, we, Mike Coulter did a good job as Luke Cage, but I think the thought was that that, that was not one that was going to be revi- that was going to be revisited in the immediate term either. Yeah. So it's like all the ones who the fans want to see and have been buzzing about are all out there telling you they want this. Yeah. Very interesting times with regards to those characters and when they'll pop up because they own them. They own them and they know there's an audience for them. And they know where, which playground that they have to play in. You can't play around. Again, you can get away with, with a few characters, but with Punisher, is that'll be tough. So um, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of, of, of Charlie Cock wanting to see John Bertho as the Punisher. You want to see him back as the Punisher. Let us know in the comment section below. Our last topic, my favorite topic, the Batman. Andy Serkis is confident, as we are, as many other people who are in this uh, movie have stated, they, they're saying that Matt Whit- Reeves and the Batman will deliver. I'm going to say this once again. That if the coast is clear and everything is sort of back to normal and movie theaters are filling up, this movie is going gonna, is gonna to break records, I think, for a Batman film and a solo. Like, I think Black, Black Panther has the, 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 the record, right, for solo Superhero, 1.3. Solo superhero. That's a good question. Um, I think it's Black Panther. That's probably right. I think certainly in domestic side, because it's like almost 700 million. That's definitely number one. Yeah. yeah. So I think the Batman will will reach those numbers. Um, If if you want to know what we said about the Batman, go back to our past... um, uh, episodes where we talk about uh, the Batman. And those are one of one of our most viewed shows because there's just a bunch of people out there as passionate as we are um, about the character and what we would like to see. And this is our first uh, glimpse that we've gotten um, s- since our last uh, trailer that we received that we're going to be seeing in fandom in a couple of weeks. I don't know. It's in yeah. mid-October or whatever. Yeah. We're going to see new footage which I'm looking forward to seeing because I just can't get enough of this film. Hopefully I don't ruin it for myself. <laughs> but I'm excited for this film. Brian, your thoughts? Well, I mean this, these are personal comments for Andy Circus because Andy Circus obviously motion captured Caesar in the Planet of the Apes movies for Matt Reeves. So there's a yes. working relationship there. Andy Serkis, obviously the director also of Venom. So that's why he's out you know, making rounds. But, you know, it goes back to the Jeffrey Wright comments about the Batman and about Pattinson's performance and about, you know, as we said, all of the flack that's been around this production and around and the rumor mill around what's happened I just don't understand if if all if if all of that was true, why are guys of the stature of Jeffrey Wright and Andy Serkis coming out and saying that based on the experience they had working on the film and based upon what they know about what's kind of being put together, that this film is off the charts amazing. It doesn't square with the rumor mill. And I tend to agree with, you know, I tend to stand with these guys, right? Like why, you know, if they had, let's put it this way, if they had a an atrocious experience on set, I don't know that they would go to bat for the production the way they are. Yeah, yeah. So, Again, I think it speaks to Matt Reeves. Uh, vision of what this film needs to be and he realizes the opportunity in getting this gig of of directing 
in producing this film. He understands what this movie needs to be. Obviously different from what we've seen in the past. And what and and what they're trying to do obviously is show us as well the detect more of the detective side of Batman. So we're getting it's something that has been lacking, I think, in, in the previous iterations as well. They they never really went for that. Um, he never seemed like the greatest mind. Although I thought Michael Keaton was 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 pretty good. But this is our first look at a different Batman, a very emotional Batman. He's going through some stuff and we will see it. Most of the times that we have seen Batman, he's very cool, calm and collected in, his, in, in some of these situations. Not this one. So we, we don't know what the production was during filming and what Matt Reeves wanted from his characters. And I think the fact that he probably got it, these guys being there and witnessed all of this, just can't wait for people to see this because that vision was seen, you know, when they when they see the playback, when they, when they, when they see this film, They've seen this film. They know what this film is going to be, pretty much, right? Outside of the parts that they filmed, they saw they they saw they saw the quality. So I don't see anyone commenting from that production saying that this movie is not that this movie is isn't going to be great. They, they're excited just as much as we are for this. So. We haven't talked much about Andy Serkis in the context of this movie. This is actually one of the more interesting portrayals that, that I've got my eye on. The character of Alfred is a choice mm -hmm. and has had as much variety as any character in the Batman universe. If you think back to, you know, Michael Keaton was a little older Bruce Wayne, fully formed Bruce Wayne. So his Alfred was kind of like a grandfather. Yeah. Which a traditional butler, little sense of levity. And they actually carried that Alfred. Um, I believe it was Michael Gao, I think was his name, was the actor's name. Um, they yeah. carried him into Joel Schumacher's Batman. He was the only actor who was the same in both mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. movies. But that was a very grandfather, traditional butler type Alfred, who wasn't really yeah. impactful to Bruce other than you know, kind of like a reassuring hand on the shoulder. Yeah. The Alfred that we got sort of in the Zack Snyder verse is also an older Alfred, but a much more active. Alfred. Yes. Really was sort of like his QB, almost like his, his eyes and ears when he was out in the field. Yeah. yeah. Like his handler. Mm-hmm. Michael Caine's Alfred in the Nolan verse kind of split the difference. He was, in one sense, he was kind of like a father grandfather figure right from the beginning. And Batman begins to show him taking care of the young Bruce Wayne. Yeah. But he also clearly had military experience when he's talking about all the stuff he had done around the world with, you know, when they ran into the bandit, you know, and yeah. whatever it was. So, and then you had the Alfred, which I thought was an interesting one in the Gotham um, TV series on Fox, where they had the mm -hmm. kid. Bruce Wayne, mm -hmm. and that Alfred was a soldier. Mm -hmm. He was a rough and tumble dude in that show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated to see what Andy Serkis is, because as an actor, when he doesn't have the motion capture on, he's probably most identified as Ulysses Claw, which is yeah. kind of a bad guy and kind of a clown. Yeah. I'm fascinated to see what he looks like, how he acts toward a 20-something young and unfinished Bruce Wayne. I think it's one of the critical relationships in this film. And I we haven't seen him in the trailer, haven't heard his voice, yeah. haven't seen an image. <laughs> Fascinated by this. I think we'll probably get a cross between the one we saw in Gotham and uh, Zack Snyder's version. 
You're going to be very active and um, he's going to be similar. I don't know if you ever saw, there was a cartoon on Channel 5. It was a Batman. It was a little bit more Incredibles type feel to it in terms of animation, if I, if I remember correctly. And Alfred was very active and physical. Andy Serkis could, could probably look similar to that um, um, portrayal in that a animated series. I am, because I, I think he's gonna be a very interesting Alfred and it'll be interesting to see how, what, what version of Alfred do we get um, in this film? Well, he has to be, to your point, he has to be kind of like Obi-Wan to Batman's Anakin at, at this stage. Batman is not old enough and not experienced enough to be making all the calls on his own. He needs guidance and yeah. he needs, but at the same time, he also needs reassurance when he screws up, when he goes too far. So that's why I, I think this role hasn't been talked about enough for this movie to really land. I think this role in this relationship, you have to believe it. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, you have to believe it. Just like Gordon's and, and Batman's. Yep, you have to believe those those two relationships are are the two relationship of that Batman considers to be top shelf of relationships, like the ones that he cares about the most. Uh, you know, before Robin, right? Yep, those two relationships have to work, and it's going to be. I'm telling you, man. We're going to see some wonderful performances. That's what I'm hoping to see out of Jeffrey Rice's Jeffrey, um, Jeffrey Wright's uh, uh, Jim Gordon and Andy Serkis's Alfred. Those those two performances and those two relationships, we got to keep a close eye on how that's going to turn out. Obviously, and the Catwoman as well. That's going to be very interesting. Because the kind of Batman that we're going to be looking at, is he going to... How is he going to, you know talk to her right how is he gonna what's that dialogue dialogue gonna be like that's gonna be very interesting to watch as well so there's a lot of different things happening in this film man that we gotta pay attention to because this is a, a, a sort of a bird's eye view for this film of batman's journey we're gonna be following his journey and the relationship that he is gonna be carrying on with a Jim Gordon and Alfred and the Catwoman and, and how he treats criminals. So there's a lot of details in here, man, that, I, that I, I'm just, I just can't wait. I just can't wait. Um, but that's our show for today. Brian, any last words? No, I mean, I think the next time we talk, Venom will probably be out and I'll probably have seen it. So, you go to the theaters to see, right? Is this yeah. only movie? This is only movie yeah, theaters, only, right? Movie theater only, but I'm gonna try to go see it. You know, opening, opening night, opening, opening weekend. So, I'm gonna see what the reviews are like before I see it. I'm gonna see what the reviews are like. Because I'm know, at this uh, point, I feel like I have to see it for the end credits thing, if nothing else. Yeah. So. True, true, true. <laughs> it's like, damn, man, do I just <laughs> let it get spoiled, or I don't want to do that. But we'll see. Well, I'm gonna wait till the reviews come out, and it'll be a last minute decision because my son wants to see it. So I might just might just might as well just go see it. But anyway, that's our show for the day. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button, that notification bell, share with your friends, and we will see you next time on the Nerd Journal Report.